Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the company update call for the full year FY 2022-23 of Star Housing Finance Limited. Today on the call we have Mr. Anup Saxena who heads the credit and operation functions and Mr. Natesh Narayanan of Star HFL, Mr. Kalpesh Dave, Chief Strategy Officer at the company and Mr. Ashish Jain, Managing Director of Star HFL. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kalpesh Tave. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Dovin. Dovin, am I audible? Yes, you are audible, sir. Thank you so much. So, very good day to all of you and warm welcome to the FY2223 earnings call of Star Housing Finance Limited. My name is Kalpesh Dave and I head corporate planning and strategy at Star SSL. First of all, I wish all our participants and stakeholders a very happy Akshay Tritya and Eid Mubarak. It's a pleasure to present to you the full year earnings update, a year that has been special in many aspects, particularly that it has set tone for growth as the Star SFL team steps ahead in its journey. So on the call, we have a CFO, Mr. Natesh Narayanan. We have Mr. Anup Saxena, who heads credit and operations, and MD, Mr. Ashish Jain. We would be sharing updates and also interact, would be interacting with the participants. We shall be sharing business and financial highlights of the year gone by for your perusal and shall be happy to take questions and interact with participants who are sharing these updates. So before sharing these updates, let me introduce Star Housing Finance to you. We are a rural focused home finance company and we are operational in semi-urban and rural geography. Star SSL operates with an objective to enable home ownership amongst the first time and new to credit home buyers from economically weaker section and low income group segment. Star SSL has been operational since 2009 and has transitioned to a professionally managed company since October 2019. And since then, we have focused our operations in retail space in affordable housing segment. More than 98% of the overall AUM as of date comprises of 2,500 plus retail customers with an average loan size of around 10 to 11 lakhs in the semi-urban geography and in rural geography, which is 6 to 8 lakhs. Star HFL caters to this segment through customized home loan products offered to them under the nomenclature Star Grameen Griha Loan. And these products are de devised and designed akin to the financing requirements of the semi-urban and rural borrowers. We have strong focus on digitization which acts as an enabler to engage and serve the customer throughout the loan life cycle. We are listed on the main board of the Bombay Stock Exchange since July 2017. And we have registered and corporate office in Mumbai. So dear participants, FY2223 has been a 100% plus year-on-year -year growth for Star SSL. We have taken great strides in building quality AUM through the year. And this growth, this scale up has been ably supported by the liability machinery and capital raise under the leadership of Mr. Natesh Narayan. Geographical expansion and domain based team buildup has enabled us to achieve the business target that we had set at the beginning of the previous financial year. 
So I am summarizing the updates for you now. So for FY 22-23, these are the updates. The gross loan book stands at rupees 250 crores plus, which is 140 percent plus year-on-year -year growth over FY 2021-2022. This scale-up comes on the back of record disbursements across the branches, across the regions during the financial year. Courtesy best-in-class underwriting processes and the risk management framework, the book continues to get built back by quality. Focused in-house receivable management team onboarded locally, bringing strong customer connect throughout the engagement cycle has resulted in portfolio at risk. And when I'm speaking about portfolio at risk, I'm talking about zero plus DPD. It has come down from 27 odd percent as of March 31st, 2022 to now 5% as of March 31st, 2023. This is a substantial improvement that has happened in FY 2022-23, courtesy the focused approach of the overall receivable management team and robust review mechanism that we have put up at the head office. Incremental book generated since October 2019 is 98% plus retail and has portfolio at risk. Now, again, when I'm talking about PAR, it is zero plus DPD. So zero plus DPD of this incremental book generated stands at 0.68% and has zero NP. As of March 31st, 2023, DNPA stands at 1.68% and NNPA stands at 1.25%. The loan book is spread across the geographies of Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Rajasthan, and Tamil Nadu. So over here, Maharashtra leads with 62%, followed by Rajasthan at 18 to 20%, Madhya Pradesh is at 10 to 12 percent and Gujarat at 6 percent and Tamil Nadu at 5 percent. Now again within Maharashtra, when we speak about Maharashtra too, the book is evenly spread across the three identified regions of our operations which is extended Mumbai region, extended Pune region and the Vidarbha region. So that's how the segregation has happened even within the Maharashtra. So within the state also the book is fairly diversified. Parachifal has doubled its presence during the year and now has 14 physical branches. The overall network consists of presence at 30 plus locations, which is include which include digital points of presence as well across our operational geography. Task count stands at 150 employees, and out of these 150 employees, 40 percent of the staff consists of credit underwriters, processing team in operations and receivable management staff spread across branches and at the head office. Star SFL had two successful rounds of capital raise in FY 2022-23, courtesy which the network as of 31st March 2023 has crossed 100 crores. And this is a significant milestone that we have achieved during the financial year. So these rounds saw participation from reputed professionals within the capital market and the FSI space. And the shareholding profile accordingly has been augmented with individual investors, institutional entities, family office, and an SPI. Star SFL now has an ecosystem of more than 6,500 shareholders, which is an increase from 530 odd shareholders back in 2019. Star SFL has now qualified the quantum criteria and now awaits to qualify the tenor criteria post which it shall become eligible to list and trade on the National Stock Exchange post receiving all necessary approvals and all compliances being met. Also during the financial year, we have affected bonus and split of the company's shares, resulting in increasing number of shares outstanding and more shares in the hands of our shareholders. This corporate action is in line with our philosophy to reward our shareholders for the trust that they have reposed in us during our journey. 
Paracetyl has a strong liability franchise with relationship with public sector banks, FI, and the National Housing Bank. So in FI 22-23, we also saw first term loan received from a social impact fund. So that activity has also started as an addition to the overall liability franchise. Through the year, Star Accessible has developed robust pipeline and shall continue to expand the engagement with other institutions in banking space. Natesh will throw more light on that. FY 22-23 saw exercise of first tranche of ESOP 1 scheme, ensuring participation of eligible employees now becoming owners of the company. And subject to all approvals and compliances in place, Star XFL looks forward to expand the ambit of employee ownership through further ESOP schemes through the growth journey post receiving all approvals and compliances. Star XFL is governed by strong and an independent board comprising of reputed professionals from BFSI and allied states. So the board comprises of Mr. A.P. Saxena, ex-GM of the National Housing Bank, Mr. Ajit Lakshmanan, ex-ED of LIC of India, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Das, ex-ED of IDBI Bank, and Ms. Neelam Kate, who is a professional chartered accountant and qualified company secretary. So these are the updates, uh, uh, dear friends, I wish to share with you. Now I call upon Mr. Natesh Narayanan to speak on the financial performance for the year. Thank you. And over to you, Natesh. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Kalpesh. Uh, good evening, all of you. Thank you for taking your time, valuable time, and joining us here. It's a, ple a pleasure to connect with you again and share the financial performance for the 12 month ending March 2023. It has been a record year for us at Star, and the same is reflected in the financial performance, the highlights of which I hereby share with you. The gross loan book stood at 250.3 and closed as of March 31st, 2023, and against 104.94 crores in March 2022, a growth of 140% year on year. The total revenue for FI23 is at 37.24 crores as against 19.26 in FI22, again a near 100% year on year growth. The interest income and the net interest income in FI23 stood at 32.35 crores and 21.06 crores as against 17.97 and 11.8 crores effectively last year. Incremental lending happened at 15.5% while the incremental borrowing cost stood at 10.5% per annum. GNP as of March 23 is at 1.68% as against 2.99 in March 22. And the NNPA as of March 23 is at 1.25% as against 2.21 in March 2022. Investment in quality, manpower, uh, to augment our growth plan and related expansion in operational geographies has resulted in employee expenses increasing by 28% year on year. Total operating expense has increased from, by 51%, primarily attributable to capacity creation for future AEM buildup and the scale up that, ha that is expected to, uh, and the scale up that has happened in the FI23. For the last 12 months, uh, period ending March 23, the PBT increased by five times year on year. Adjusting for the exceptional non cash expense uh, related to ESOP, PBT has increased by 220% uh, uh, year on year. For the 12 month period ending March 23, that increased by 10 times year on year. Adjusting for the exceptional non cash expense, that has increased by 270% year on year. In FI 23, the company has onboarded ICICI Bank, LIC Housing, Sundaram Housing, Chola, Chola Mandalam Finance, Mass Rural Housing, and also a social impact fund in the, in the form of Mandalia Development. That's our new lenders. During the year, the company has raised fresh term loans from 11 banks and financial institute, institutions with a current outstanding of 111.6 crores. The total outstanding borrowing as of 31st March 
2023 is at 162.5 crores. The pre-tax ROE stands at 9.4% and the pre-tax ROE at 4.54%. Taking a note of the company's growth, quality of loan book, established processes and risk framework, and the management team, the overall corporate governance, care ratings had upgraded our outlook of the company to positive from stable in the fourth quarter of SI23. I conclude with the following points. Net worth as of March 23 stands at 106.41 crores and the leverage at 1.53 times. The company is very well capitalized and shall subject to all approvals in place should look to strengthen the capital levels further to enable a 500 crore AUM scale up in the next four to six quarters, thereby becoming a systematically important housing finance company. The investment in infrastructure, manpower, and technology has created a capacity for a monthly disbursement of 25 to 30 crores, and which shall be used for scale up in FY24. Through the year, through the year Star HFL has developed a robust funding pipeline and shall continue to expand the engagement with, the, with other institutions in bank space <coughs> and in the capital market space to support the AEM growth and research in FI24. This, I hand over the call to our MD, Mr. Ashish Jain. Thank you, and over to you, Ashish. Thank you, Natesh. Thank you, Kalpesh. Uh, dear participants, wall welcome and best wishes from Star HFL leadership team. It is always a pleasure to address and interact with you. The object of arranging these earnings calls regularly is to share updates on the company's progress. We are pleased to say Star HFL leadership team had resolved that from FI 20 to 23, we shall grow and this year has been 100% plus by and by growth registered across key business and financial parameters. In fact, the growth of gross loan box past rupees 250 crores given record disbursement in last year is equivalent to the growth that had been achieved in the previous 12 years in the company's operational history. We are happy to have pared down par that is zero plus DPD to now low single digits. The Star HFL team is now 150 plus members strong with all of them having requisite domain and vintage for their respective function. The role and responsibility of each and every member is clearly defined as a part of their KPI, courtesy which FI 22-23 was the first year of synchronized and record growth. We have expanded and shall continue to expand to new geographies in North and South in FI 23-24 while digging deeper in existing states where we are present. We are happy to have raised capital regularly through our growth phase courtesy with the network crossing rupees 100 crores holds well from the perspective of capitalization levels. And as Natesh mentioned, we shall continue to strengthen these levels subject to all approvals to enable scale up becoming systematically important home finance company by end of 2023-24. Our liability machinery, of course, has scaled up and is expected to build through further FI 23-24, building reasonably acceptable leverage levels through the journey. We keep our ears and eyes open, listening to what the borrower needs, and we continue to incorporate those wishes in our product planning and rolling out rural focused customer centric home loan products. I believe that Star HFL is a symbol of growth and reflects the tremendous opportunity that lies ahead in rural India residential mortgage space. Aspirations of rural India are changing as this segment across states and regions is now starting to get included in the financial mainstream. One feels the driver of rise in income levels, nuclearization, and infrastructure development should see next wave of demand for housing in rural and associated semi-urban geographies. At policy level two, the focus of the government of India in rural housing is evident from the outlay of rupees 54,487 crores under the PNY Gramin Yojana for the current financial year, which is almost the double the outlay for urban version of the scheme as it targets to build incremental 8.3 million houses in rural India by March 24. These tailwinds 
should work not only for Star HFL, but even for our peers who wish to operate and grow in this space. The sheer size of the opportunity not only gives every player an even platform, but also to innovate and bring out products akin to requirements of home loan borrowers in the geography. One feels that at policy level two, rural focused HFCs should be supported as given their monoline and focused business model, enabling credit access to these first time homeowners. For Star HFL, we are happy to have walked the talk achieving the targets that we had set for ourselves in the beginning of FY2023. These 100% Vyanva growth has been systematic process driven and backed by quality led by strong leadership team of Kalpesh, Natesh, Anup, regional directors and location heads across our geographies. We look ahead from here on and would remain focused in affordable housing space, providing housing finance assistance to target EWS, LIG families in semi-urban and rural geographies of our operation as they aspire to purchase, construct their own home. Given the favorable drivers and the potential addressable market segment, Star HFL through its domain reach team across the functions and geographies is well poised to continue this growth momentum in FY23-24. I thank all our stakeholders, including our regulator, the RBI, the National Housing Bank, bankers, rating agencies, business associates, customers, employees, and of course, their families to have supported us in this journey. We look forward to create value for all our stakeholders. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Happy Akshay Tratiya. Happy Eid. Operator, over to you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ramjit Cheswal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi there. It was great to hear about the company. So I have basically two simple questions. The first is, what is your current portfolio at risk? And second, how do you research your business? Thank you. So I guess the question is on the ultimate risk. And uh, second one, if I heard correctly, because you were a bit shocked, what, what is, how do we source our business, right? Yes, correct. Okay. So Anup, you want to answer this question, please? Absolutely right. I would like to answer that question. So, uh, so to answer question number one, which was related to portfolio at risk, so that was clearly mentioned by uh, Kalpesh during this conversation. <clears throat> that our portfolio at risk, which is a zero plus DPD stand set, stuck 5% as of now. And uh, as, uh, as far as second question is concerned, how do we source our businesses? Our 90% business is sourcing through direct uh, selling, uh, direct sales team, which is in-house sales team and deployed in our uh, physical branches. These in-house sales team are uh, uh, supported by inbuilt uh, uh, LOS system, uh, tap based application. So they uh, go, go door to door of the customers and source applications from there. So 90% business are coming from a direct sales team and 10% business are coming through referral business. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Bipin Kumar, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good to hear about the growth of the company. So my question is, what effort are you taking on a digital front? As you see, the world is moving towards digitization of processes. Okay. Uh, Thank you so much. Anu, again, you would want to yeah, answer yeah, the yeah. deployment of lending suite that we are doing? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. I would like to answer that, uh, Bipin. 
So, uh, you can, as correctly mentioned, that word is uh, moving towards digitization in a uh, rapid manner. So, uh, posting the same thing uh, earlier, we were uh, we were we were uh, deploying the uh, systems through one of the uh, old LMS suites. Now that has been uh, we are we are transiting that LMS switch to new uh, technology software. We have already tied up with one of the renowned vendor based out of uh, uh, Bangalore. And the technology implementation is uh, is under process, wherein the 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 one part of the technology has already been uh, made live to the branches. So uh, so this is uh, this is in house uh, uh, built built in uh, LMS application, which is obviously integrated by different APIs. Why why uh, uh, with the help of these APIs, we are uh, currently we are able to serve our customer within uh, four to five uh, uh, working days time period. And uh, I would I would be happy to announce that uh, the the most perfect uh, thing in, into the lending business, which is title search, we are able to fetch title search within 15 minutes time period after putting records in place. So that is how we are we are working on uh, digitization, and uh, uh, happy to share that perhaps by the by the end of May we will be completely end to end uh, digital. We will be based on completely end to end digital uh, platform. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, it is. That was fine. Thank you. Thank you so much for the answer. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kalpesh Parekh from JSN Advisory. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, first of all, congratulations to the uh, management team for you know uh, supporting a very very strong num set of numbers. I have few questions on. Uh, the business model and probably you know on the growth trajectory what we should anticipate for in the next few years see i mean uh, uh, the last year was very good and i think we did a phenomenal job but would it be uh, fair to assume on a lower base that we can continue with such type of growth for next few years particularly on the disbursement front particularly on your you know the uh, the uh, you know uh, the the EU in front and all that thing. Sure. So I'll take that question, uh, Kalpesh. Um, uh, see, obviously you you have hit it very right that you know the base of the company has been low, and on that all the numbers that physically would uh, the come would be hundred percent plus. But you will understand and appreciate that you know it is this journey of you know zero to five hundred crores which is the most difficult for any HSC to get transition from a small uh, HSC to a you know mid-sized HSC and become a you know uh, entity to reckon with across uh, the stakeholding spectrum. So obviously you know that that small side that you, you know we had uh, resolved that we will take that we have already taken. And just to answer to your question, uh, yes, FY2324, we are resolving to become a systemically important home finance company uh, by 31st of March 2324, which means that, you know, this one more year, if you are able to achieve it, I'm not giving any guidance over here, but if you are able to achieve it, that would be again 100% year on year growth on the back of uh, FY2223 uh, uh, you know, numbers. What gives us confidence from the fact of the matter, as Ashish uh, clearly mentioned, that there is tailwind uh, which is associated. And more importantly, you know, we have seen, you know, on the ground how the rural India is kind of emerging, is getting connected with the, you know, uh, urban counterparts through the infrastructure development that we are seeing across the region. So, you know, as they get, uh, you know, embedded into the overall mainstream, their uh, income levels, their activities will continue to get, uh, you know, uh, increased. And with that, the the drivers that Ashish had mentioned, you know, nuclearization, uh, you know, the family getting split into two, home owning aspiration increase, that that thing, is, you, you know, you must have, you must be tracking this sector very closely. So the same, the same way resulted in creation of, you know, uh, multiple satellite cities across Mumbai, across Delhi and other places. And that gave birth of, you know, top, top four to five, uh, you know, players in the uh, HSC space, uh, you know, namely HDFCs of the world. So I see similar kind of thing happening in the rural area. Uh, and more, more importantly, even the post-COVID post scenario that the reverse, migration has resulted in demand for incremental housing over there. Uh, 
uh, you know people basically going back to the native their abandoned uh, you know villas requiring refurbishment or even a run down and you know create and creation of uh, a bigger one to accommodate a bigger family and even within that you know someone wants a bigger house for that matter they would basically look out for a bigger piece of uh, unit so those those you know ground level changes uh, are happening and we are constantly hearing from our regional directors and our low and, and our uh, you know location has there is a demand uh, it is now up to us up to star housing how we can uh, you know fulfill that particular demand how we can organize ourselves well to cater to that demand uh, but i do feel that star sfl as an entity is poised very well to register another 100% year on year growth if you talk to me about a long term plan from strategy perspective i would say 20 up to 2027 20, we should have a kgr of 50% plus which should basically give us a loan book of around 2000 2500 or crores i'm not giving again not giving any guidance but this is what the opportunity size is there uh, and what uh, gives us confidence is that you know we have the specific domain we have those our regional directors who have 20 25 years of experience in those local geographies they are able to differentiate between whatever is well ported and well poised so our underwriting processes are also are local in nature it is in line with you know whatever is there on ground so we do feel that uh, you know we should be able to sustain this particular momentum obviously lot depends on macro economic environment how the covid pans out how other things happen but if you talk to me uh, you know my uh, you know my, my calculation would be the capacity is already created for one more year of 100% earn in growth and we would take one step at a time to you know uh, uh, go past uh, becoming a systemically important home finance company in the region so our current run rate just uh, you know to mention to you is around 15 to 18 crores of monthly disbursement which should go past around 25 to 30 crores on a steady state basis during this financial year okay so uh, my second question will be on your spreads basically uh, i i i understood uh, it is somewhere around 4 and 1/2 to 5% uh, right. 15 and 10 so, so going forward are you facing any headwinds in the form of borrowing cost or anything so now since you have started moving more towards the other nbfcs and banks as such so what is the scenario over there on the borrowing cost front let us you want to answer on that borrowing cost yeah i'll i'll take that uh, see on the <clears throat> on the uh, spread uh, spread uh, yeah, funds we are uh, enjoying about uh, 5 to 500 find it to 525 basis point of spread uh, the average cost of borrowing around being around the uh, 10 half and the lending at around the uh, lending at around 15 to 15 and a half while So the bulk of the uh, interest rate cycle increase in interest rate cycle has uh, uh, has been seen in the in this financial year however if you see today the borrowing profile we have about 35 30 to 35% being coming of our funds coming from nhb another 30 to 35% coming from uh, psu bank and then the remaining rest 30% coming from any uh, from the nbfc side which is uh, typically the financial institution side with a small portion from the social impact fund so if we maintain this color uh, given the broad interest rate uh, scenario that involves i think for this financial year maintaining the spread will not be while it will be challenging but i don't think that there will be a huge uh, pressure as far as uh, the spread is concerned it will still be around the same number for uh, we foresee the same number to be maintained at least for the forthcoming financial year of 2024 okay and yeah. also just to add to what natesh is saying yeah obviously there has been a margin margin contraction in the balance sheet level given that you know there has been an increasing repo rate cycle uh, right. obviously the lender the you know uh, the lenders will uh, pass on their uh, cost hike uh, to us and our cost of borrowing on on that particular account has increased uh, you know uh, from uh, around 9 and a half 9 quarter to around 10 and a half uh, 10 quarter for that matter uh, but we do feel that you know uh, this margin contraction should be kind of more or less offset by the volumes that we are going to generate over uh, fy 2324 and uh, uh, obviously you know we uh, one view that internally uh, within the strategy team also holds that you know repo repo cycle kind of will you know at some point it like peak out in the foreseeable future so that should that that should go well but again you know we are not we are not counting on the things that are not under our control what we are focusing on is that the margin contraction should be offset by the scale of the business that we should that we, that we generate 
and that's how we are, uh, we are we are looking at it. Just to answer to your questions that you know new uh, lenders getting onboarded, obviously FIs are there, but uh, you know there are other engagements with public sector banks, there are engagements with private sector banks uh, which are right now underway, and our pipeline in terms of liabilities is you know anywhere between 100 or crores are right now in different stages of discussion with uh, with these banks and FIs. So that that should not be an issue. And as I said that you know uh, during the call that you know we we look forward to further capitalize also subject to all of those in place. So with that thing coming into uh, onto the balance sheet, the overall uh, borrowing cost per se inclusive of entire money you know should be under control and that should get translated into the PPP. If we do our operations and uh, manage our uh, costs very well. Okay. So going by this logic, uh, and uh, uh, in your earlier remarks also, you had mentioned that we have got some good manpower, and you know we have already added on the opex front as well. So it would be safe to presume that your uh, the you know the cost to income ratio probably in all possibility should uh, you know uh, decline from year on. Uh, I would say uh, in uh, you know on an incremental level, yes. But if you talk about an overall level, uh, you know we still uh, think that we should be building up capacity in FI uh, 2024 as well. Uh, and as you said, that we we are aiming to again double our capacity uh, subject to uh, our growth plans being approved. So one more one more year of increasing our capacity, and from there on, uh, you know incremental volume that will be generated. Uh, these branches getting profitable, um, uh, you know over a period of next five to six months. Then the cost uh, to income ratio rationalization would happen. Uh, as per our plan, we, we we do feel that we should hit that uh, you know sweet spot of 20% plus mark in you know around uh, 10 to 12 quarters from here on. Okay. So what would be? Uh, I mean, if I can ask a couple of questions more, and um, what would be uh, the ROE uh, presumptions with which we are going uh, uh, for the next few years? Are we looking at something like 15, 17 percent type of ROE? Uh, so, is it sustainable? That that type of ROE would be sustainable yeah. for the business. So that's right. So that's right. So so again to answer to your question, uh, ROE I would again see right now my free is at around 9.4 or percent. Uh, you know just short of the, you know uh, getting double digits. So that build up we have seen culpage from 4 percent, 5 percent ROE to now because that investment is now getting sacrificed. So answer to your question, my steady state ROE as we are planning for getting all the growth capital and everything and I'm talking about, you know, completing in the next level of, at that point time, we are obviously targeting of, uh, you know, ROE in the range of 18 to 22 uh, percent. But this is, you know, a long shot for us right now at this point in time, we want to build book, we want to ensure that the return ratio should get associated with it only after, uh, you know, the capacity is in place and the book gets, uh, you know, starts kicking in the uh, income for the entire financial year. Uh, if you tell, if you ask me about the you know target for you know as per the business plan, 18 to 22 percent ROE should hit again somewhere in around 25, 26, so on and so forth. So three years from now, again 10 to 12 quarters from now, I should see this ROE of uh, 18 to 22 percent. Uh, you know, obviously a lot depend on how good we are leveraging on the initial on the capital that we are that we are generating, uh, that we are that we are raising. Uh, right now, our leverage level is at around 1.5, 1.6 times. Uh, we look forward to increase these leverage levels to two and a half, three times, and concomitantly bring in capital at the same time, so that you know again there is one set of uh, you know increase in the uh, leverage opportunity that we want to cash in. So yeah, just to answer to your question, four and a half percent, four, four and a half percent ROA, and three, three and a half times leverage should see us through that number. And from there on, the growth should be linear in nature, in line with uh, you know whatever industry is doing. Okay, so uh, the fund requirement or money requirement, will, uh, like anything, we would be looking at it in next couple of years as such? Yeah, that's right. So um, uh, just to answer your question, current year also as for the plan, we need to uh, further uh, send in the capital. And uh, this year, uh, we are looking to engage with institutions uh, for, get, for getting that uh, institutional capital. At least, you know, get the uh, talk ready and, uh, you know, engage with them. Because that's a process. You, you also know that culture. It takes time. But, yeah, we would look forward to raise capital, subject to, again, subject to all approvals and things. No guidance being given by me. But we are looking forward to strengthen the capital level further. Okay. Fair enough. And wish you all the best to the team. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Balpesh. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Priya Jada. 
from the word broker please go ahead uh operator i just want to i, I just want to uh, priya just just like i just want to announce to the participants that very happy to share that you know this earnings call is right now being attended by 125 plus uh, you know uh, uh, participants across bank, banking rating uh, you know capital market space and uh, more than happy to interact with the with, with this with this group that we are having and look forward to have you in future calls as well yeah priya yeah hi uh uh my question is that uh, what are your point as in plans in the next sorry sorry to interrupt uh, ma'am but uh, there seems to be an echo that is uh, coming through on your line hello can you hear me yeah you yeah we can hear you you can you can ask the question hello yeah hello yeah 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 we can hear you huh? yeah uh what is your guidance on business building uh, in the next financial year business building as i said we are you know we are uh, we we are planning uh, to achieve 500 crores in uh, income by 31st march 2024 which means that incrementally for the year we should be planning uh, around uh, 250 to 300 crores of uh, disbursement okay. yeah and uh, second is that what are your fund raise plan in the next financial year uh that is you want to answer that fund raising plan a uh, fund raising plan plans in the next financial year yeah 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 sure sure that is you want to answer yeah. that fund raising plan i know uh, so i uh, look here as as uh, kalpe has pointed out if you are looking at a uh, 100% growth of the aum that's our target for this year that's our aim for this year we are looking at we will be having a minimum disbursement of around 350 to 375 crores uh after even if we adjust for the capital raise that we are planning which will be uh, 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 close to uh, uh, half a million to a million dollars i think we will raise about 300 crores of debt and about half a million to a million dollars of equity yeah thank you thank you Participants uh, who wish to to ask may please press star one. The next question is from the line of Anand Rajaram from Azalea Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Anand. Yeah. I would like to congratulate the star team for excellent set of numbers. Couple of questions from my side. Uh, you had mentioned the NIM currently is about four and a half to five percent. Uh, how has the NIM moved in the last couple of years? That is point number one. Point number two is uh, since the company is going to double its AUM in the next one year, uh, and since the company is also sourcing business from internal. uh resources and the credit team is built uh, would that would mean that there will be a pressure on the cost to income ratio yeah so uh, anand just to answer your question uh, the nim i'm talking about the spread because you know for a company like us wherein we have raised uh, regular equity nim probably would not be justice to the numbers because it would be in double digits but if you talk about the spread the spread has always been uh, you know our endeavor is to be maintaining the Credit four hundred fifty to five hundred basis points. Now, uh, you know when I talk about the erstwhile uh, avatar of the company, uh, you know even the incremental spread was was at around you know um, uh, at ten percent, eleven percent because it it was in a different segment. We basically have rationalized our interest rate offering, uh, so our incremental lending rate has come down to around fifteen or percent. Whereas borrowing uh, rate has basically you know come down from forty uh, odd percent previously. I'm talking about uh, you know uh, FIT eighteen, nineteen, nineteen, twenty. So now at around you know ten and a half, ten uh, you know ten point seven five percent. So this is something which we are maintaining. Obviously there has been a contraction previously. Uh, uh, you know before the increase in repo rate, we used to have a higher spread around five hundred fifty odd basis point. That has now come down to four seventy five odd basis point. Uh, but as i said that you know uh, that margin contraction should get offset by the scale up that we should do uh, uh, in fy 2324 and uh, uh, you know uh, as we are focusing even on the equity and we are focusing on social impact fund then uh, also also there is a you know regular uh, you know credit line given uh, from the nhd we do feel that the 
borrowing cost should remain steady at this particular level it should not go beyond this and uh, we should be able to maintain this particular spread of uh, 450 to 550 so i am talking of giving, giving you a broad range irrespective of repo rate increase it is 450 to 550 something which we should maintain uh, as a spread going ahead through our growth journey and talking about over the next 8 to 10 operational quarter so that is on on that side of it uh, to answer to your questions on the uh, you know uh, plans that we want to uh, execute in the next financial year in terms of doubling our loan book see you have to understand that you know we have doubled our branches so from 7 to 7 it is now 14 so now these 14 odd branches would be now operating in full throttle full capacity with an average rent rate of around 20 to 25 watt per hour okay uh, you know obviously that does not happen in q1 uh, it is basically gradually based up but as we increase q1 to q2 to q3 to q4 The, the 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 build up should ensure that you know the current network should give us around more than 80% of whatever we are earning at this point in time uh, the increase in branches again you know in 2024 as i said that we wish to again double our presence subject to all things in this case that will again put in a you know pressure on the cost to income ratio obviously i agree to agree on that part of it but we do feel that from fi 24 25 onwards the cost to income ratio should start to get uh, stabilized and end of 25 should see as you know reaching up to that any such level of uh, you know 25 percent of uh, cost to uh, you know uh, cost to income ratio is and such and also wanted to share that you know anu said that you know the current digital platform that we are that we are uh, deploying uh, internally in in our next strategy means when the team is meeting we would be uh, having serious discussion on ensuring that at least 10 to 15% of my incremental uh, you know uh, uh, lending should be hassle free should be uh, without any without any assistance from uh, you know external connected such so that digital lending if you are able to you know crack that um, uh, well we should be able to free pool that cost to income ratio the target that you set for ourselves thank you kalpesh and wishing the start team all the best for the growth plan for next year Thank you so much. Thank you, Anand. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashok Mehta from Juniper Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, I would like to congratulate the entire Star HFL team for reporting very strong numbers. And I have two questions from my side. So, what was the provision coverage ratio as of March 23, and how does the ALM stand as of March 23, given? Uh, we have uh, you know borrowing from nbfc as well where the you know uh, tenor might might not be as long as uh, what nh nh what nh we offer sure 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 ashok so i will answer on the uh, ptr part of it and i will ask uh, natesh to answer on the alm side see on the provision coverage ratio uh, you know if you if you consider the provisions that we have made, the overall provision as mandated by the nh the ptr currently stands at around 48% Uh, uh as we speak as of march 31st 2023 uh however you know one one in you know, couple of things want to mention in the ptr part of it is that you know we have done excess over and above provisions as mandated by the rbi and the nhb uh taking that you know uh, excess provisions into account and including you know some of the write outs uh, which we have done on a cumulative basis this ptr adjusting for all these things is in excess of 100% so when i say that my gnp is 3.82 crores it is totally provided for uh, in the on the balance sheet and, and in the pnl okay thank you and on the alm side let us want to answer yeah so on the alm side uh, 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 while we have had this uh, discipline we while uh, even if we are borrowing from a financial irrespective of where whom we are borrowing from a financial institution or a bank an nhb is a different uh, volume altogether who may give us more than 10 year money or near close to 10 year money uh, even from the bank we have managed to get uh, money for more than 7 years uh, in, uh, in terms of financial institutions Our uh, average uh, tenor, uh, the average tenor that we have borrowed from most of the financial institutions is uh, is close to five years or more. But our ALM is fairly robust. We have had no uh, mismatches in any of our buckets, at least up to five years. All of them are positive, and on the balance sheet, since we are sitting on close to 29, 30 crores of cash, 
covering up for two uh, two months of uh, uh, disbursement. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may please press star one. The next question is from the line of Bhavik Bucha, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi team. Uh, firstly, congratulations on great set of numbers, just like the name of the company. Uh, my uh, question is, uh, I'm not sure whether it's already been covered, but uh, any view on the uh, spectrum of the credit quality of the borrowers and um, uh, in terms of if you could uh, uh, quantify it in terms of percentage uh, uh, of uh, money lent to different uh, credit quality of borrowers, please. Uh, so to answer to that question, uh, you know, our uh, current, our occupation spread, we offer, we offer home loans to salaried as well as self-employed customers. Currently, incremental split uh, between salaried and self-employed is 35 to 65. So one third of my borrowers are in salaried profile, two third are, are from self-employed profile. In terms of their uh, you know, repayment behavior, as, as uh, you know, we mentioned that the portfolio risk currently is at uh, you know, 5%, which is zero plus GP, that the new book that we are generating is at around 0.68%. So, you know, uh, the the risk that emanates from a self-employed customer is, uh, is is I would say around 40 to 50 basis points more than what would be from a salaried customer, typical salaried customer, and that is uh, that is what is getting encapsulated onto my uh, you know portfolio at risk when I split it between salaried and self-employed. Uh, uh, obviously, the delinquency is part of it. The 3.82 crore that we are uh, talking about. Again, out of, you know, if you're talking about debt NPA, 80% uh, of, uh, you know, the customers within that segment is self-employed customer and 20% are salaried customers. So, uh, obviously, you know, as, as a, pro as a uh, uh, you know, profile and application type suggests also, the self-employed customers are more prone to, you know, uh, 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 income fluctuations given the nature of their business. But, but uh, uh, you know, as we say that, you know, there is, we are uh, deploying very strong review mechanism and whatever learning that we are doing uh, in the incremental lending that we are incorporating in our, uh, you know, uh, credit policy. Because of which, you know, the newer centers that are that are coming now, and it's very interesting, the newer centers of, you know, seven or locations that we have, that we have opened up and the loans that we are doing over there, obviously, very, very you know, very early times, um, uh, you know, again, the book has to be seasoned, but that, that book, even even in, in in that there are no early warning signals as such. There are the bounce ratio, which is basically the main indication, is equivalent for salaried and self-employed for these businesses. And you know, if I'm extrapolating on that, uh, I should be able to control uh, you know uh, those kind of selling versions that emanate from a self-employed customer. But yeah, as I said, you know, this is the breakup from the selling versions level of salaried and self-employed, and we are constantly monitoring uh, you know health of the portfolio. Within the occupation type, within the you know uh, ticket size type, within the region, so on and so forth. Just to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Kalpesh Dave for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dawin. Uh, so. Participants, thank you so much uh, for coming, uh, for taking time out, uh, you know, on a Saturday, on a holiday, to uh, attend to this call and hearing us. It is always a pleasure. Our endeavor is to be extremely transparent with you and share not only our hit but even our message. Uh, we are a growing housing finance company. There is a long way ahead, and we intend to become a meaningful player in the affordable housing space within the geography that we are operating. We are not looking for, you know, gaining market share, becoming, you know, becoming a number one, number two, two. In that, that range, we are not there. We want to ensure the build-up of book is backed by quality, build-up by solid processes and guidelines. And that is what we are, that is what we have been doing in FY2023. You know, there, there would be a lot of euphoria in 100% plus growth, even if the base is low, but, you know, our, our heads are firmly on our shoulders. And we look forward to continue this growth, growth momentum as we move on. So just encapsulating uh, the overall business performance, the loan book is crossing, gross loan book is crossing 250 crores. Uh, our AUM uh, is in 
you know lower single digit which is five per, uh, our pr i'm so sorry our pr is at lower single digit which is 0 plus gpd is at 5% our gnpa is 1.65% our provision coverage ratio inclusive of all the provisions and excess provisions that are there is 100% covering the entire uh, you know uh, 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 the gnpa that is that is being given so that that is there uh, our build up is diversified we are present across the states of maharashtra madhya pradesh gujarat rajasthan and tamil nadu we look forward to expand north and south as we move ahead in fy 23 24 our net worth has crossed 100 crores we are now well poised to 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 uh, capitalize on uh, you know uh, qualifying the uh, the tenor criteria so that get listed on the nsc subject to all approvals and say i do feel that you know we are now one step away from that much needed upgrade that we are envisaging and even you uh, you know some of the people have been asking us as to, you know when is that due so we do feel that you know 2024 q1 or q2 i would say i would think q1 would be should be the uh, you know quarter when we should get that but much needed uh, you know upgrade based on the merit that we are deserving based on the business performance that we are showing uh liability under under the leadership of nate is 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 doing well um you know capital raised and the debt that we have raised uh, should be able to uh, you know continue that particular momentum and support the aum scale up as we grow uh, top line bottom line growth is you know uh, uh, to it adjusting for the non cash uh, uh, items adjusting for the ease of expenses we do feel and now again i'm not giving any guidance but we do feel that you know if we are able to you know uh, register similar 100% in the near growth the pad the bottom line should also uh, increase in that particular way and fashion all we need to do is we need to continue what we are doing uh, and ensure that the book is built up uh, back by quality so this is the encapsulation of the overall performance uh, that we have done during the year once again thank you all the stakeholders uh, and we look forward to engage with you as we grow from here on if you have any queries any suggestions any any uh, you know thing to ask even post call please reach out to our investor relations you can reach out to me or either natesh anup or uh, ashish individually and we'll be more than happy to interact and answer any of your questions so that's it from my side uh, thank you so much uh, once again uh, very happy akshay tritya and eid mubarak to all of you thank you so much thank Over you darling sorry go ahead sir over to you robin thank you all right thank you sir on behalf of star housing finance limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines